Hi Tubies, here's Sir Alexander again, and welcome to another live stream of me. I know a lot of you uh, don't like the live stream format, but <clears throat> to be honest, that's uh, now a way for me to, uh, well, force me a little bit to paint. You know that uh, I'm suffering right now. Um, major painting burnout, and uh, so I can force myself <clears throat> to actually paint. Well, uh, don't see that now as an actual tutorial. This is just uh, well, watching me paint. Today, I'm painting here uh, three high elves from Lord of the Rings. Uh, basically, just to paint something. So, uh, I've went ahead and uh, primed the miniatures in brown. I used uh, Army Painter Spray Primer for that. <coughs> Here, leather brown. And uh, yeah, I'll start right <coughs> into the painting. Um, a little bit uh, in front. Um, this is uh, now a way here to. Uh, oops, it's a little bit blurry right now. Well, let's see if I can fix that. Uh, ah, there we go. Okay, um, a little bit in front. Uh, <clears throat> in order to uh, paint lots of minis, uh, you have to prepare two things uh, for that to be <clears throat> really effective. First of all, um, you have to choose the right primer. So. Um, in this case, uh, I want to paint these um, high elves in gold and red. And as a perfect primer for that is a brown tone, because uh, golds and reds will cover uh, very well on a brown tone. And uh, so this undercoat uh, helps me to achieve that goal, that I want to go with these miniatures. And uh, point number two is obviously uh, the color scheme of the miniature, to have a easy color scheme uh, that you can easily paint over one specific uh, primer. And, well, I will simply start now with uh, gold. Uh, I will use now here the uh, Auric Armor Gold. <clears throat> and also as well, uh, those might be uh, now high elves, but uh, I get a lot of requests uh, to paint um, Easterlings from a lot of the rings. Unfortunately, I don't have any Easter links, and uh, I am not planning to get any. But they are painted in gold and red, and so this might help you a little bit here. So I simply paint here with a older base coat brush now all the metal parts in gold over the brown. So, and as here, I've already 17 viewers. Hi there. So, and as usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment, comment section on YouTube down below. And during the painting process, I'm going to answer them. Well, not all of them, but... <clears throat> as many as I can. So, da, 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 da. so, and don't worry, I will make normal painting tutorials as well in the future. This is not now my total uh, painting uh, profile I'm going here on YouTube. No, absolutely not. I just see this uh, live streams as a new tool, and I, I kind of like it to get more in touch with my uh, subscribers. So if you don't like it, well, then don't watch it. I don't force you to watch my videos. I just want to make nice content for you, informative content that is free. Yeah. 
here. The gold covers really nice over the brown. <coughs> Not a problem at all. Dum -dum -dum. 21 viewers, nice, nice. Hello, everybody. So, okay, the gold is painted on. bit more okay <clears throat> so let's have a look if we have already some comments ah there are comments no, 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 no. <clears throat> Hello, do you paint Warhammer 40k from Captain Commentary? Uh, well, no, right now I'm painting here a lot of the rings miniatures. Uh, cheers from Mars. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Are you the pilot of the Mars robot? rover? <clears throat> have you picked up any of the Hobbit stuff? Um, yes and no. I have uh, picked up the rule book, as you might have seen my uh, unboxing or first view video but I don't plan on uh, picking up any of the uh, new box releases <clears throat> because uh, well there is nothing that uh, <clears throat> interests me in uh, Lord of the Rings uh, I'm interested in um, a themed army, for example, here the <coughs> High Elves or the Urukai, and I'm not at all interested in uh, replaying the movies or something like that. So uh, you will not see that at all from me. So, uh, <coughs> okay, let's see what else do we have. I missed the start. What is the base coat? The base coat is uh, leather brown from Army Painter. Yeah. Hope that helps. <clears throat> yes, this is a high elf from the Lord of the Rings range, Silver Drake 83. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paint some orcs. Okay. Uh, for your viewing pleasure, I have here the builded uh, orc I have made an unboxing for. <clears throat> there might be a, a painting tutorial in the future. I hope I can overcome my angry against orcs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, the camera keeps popping out in and out of focus. This uh, it is focusing here on the background. It is uh, a smooth background, the smoothest uh, that I can uh, get, but uh, it still focuses on that when uh, I'm going away and have less stuff in front. Well, that's the problem of making something live. Hello from Denmark. I have found much inspiration from your videos. Thanks for making them. I was thinking. How do you go about painting hair? I have trouble making it look good from Johnny Frestenson. Um, yeah, how to paint hair. Uh, I have hair tutorials in lots of my videos. Mostly uh, it's quite simple. Paint them in, in a shade, in one shade, for example, a brown tone, then uh, give them the wash for uh, the shadows. And uh, after the wash is dry, uh, slightly uh, highlight the edges with the uh, edge side of the brush. So, 
and uh, there you go, then you have your <coughs> hairs. <laughs> so, I will base coat now the red coat of the miniature uh, with a red. I use corn red for that. And I will darken that down. I use a little bit of uh, Vallejo Model Color Smoke. That's a very dark brown tone. Yeah, that's good. Basically a one-to-one -one ratio. <coughs> so. Let's go back to the left picture. I can actually see what I'm painting here. Not go out of frame or focus too much. And that covers very well over the brown, as you can see. <coughs> it covers with one stroke. So this brown primer I can highly recommend. Very highly. If you want to paint red models. <coughs> this goes as well for blood angels. Space Marines for corn demons and everything else in red. So guys, have you also missed in the, uh, in the last month or so some YouTubers here on YouTube <coughs> well, I'm seeing that several of the older YouTubers <clears throat> like myself, who are in this community for uh, three years or even longer, um, start to disappear here on YouTube. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So, Canada Fish, where are you again? <laughs> Please make videos again. Or, well, uh, Doremicon, Solid Smurf, uh, bootleg painting, or <clears throat> well, if I wanted, I could name a lot, but uh, yeah, it's it seems like uh, they have uh, lost the, the vibes to uh, to paint miniatures. I don't I don't get it why. Or they have uh, lost the vibes to make YouTube videos. So, um, I wonder why that is. I really do. So, now I take both the metal. Or the equivalent nowadays. Put the chainmail armor. Oh, 
cash a little bit. Flesh tone, for example, but there I need a smaller brush. And oh, this one is good. The face. Now let's go quickly over the hands. rest of the weapon. I'm doing that after I've painted the hands because uh, so that way I can overpaint now everything that I've made a painting mistake with a skin tone. You should always uh, work your miniatures from the hard to access points to the easy to access points. So normally it is called to paint a miniature from inside to the outside. Meaning simply that you uh, start with the uh, areas that you can uh, not so easy reach normally with your brush without hitting other parts of the miniatures accidentally. So if you have such areas in the miniature, paint them first so that the accidents on other parts of the miniature can easily be fixed because those parts aren't painted yet and then you simply paint them anyway and with that stroke you paint the part and already fixed the mistake. So. Yeah. Uh, and now the whole miniature is base coated. I'll let that dry a little bit and ask, uh, answer one or two questions. Let's see. <clears throat> From Christopher Schwanitz, uh, Troop Kings for the win. <laughs> well, have fun with that army. <clears throat> what do you think of the Hobbit rules? Have you had a chance to read through it yet? Uh, from My Twins. Um, yes and no. I have uh, started to read the rules here and there, um, but major changes uh, have not been uh, appeared to me. Uh, only change I have uh, noticed so far is pre-measuring. Um, so you can now all days pre-measure everything in Lord of the Rings. And um, 
like Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy now. <clears throat> and also another thing, in the rule book are now uh, standard scenarios for Lord of the Rings. And in those scenarios, uh, the um, initiative don't start automatically at uh, the good guys. Normally, the good guys always uh, start, but uh, this appears now only to the uh, yeah uh, movie scenarios. I would call them. So let's put that under the lamp to let it dry faster. Good work. Thanks for sharing and caring from Mr. Eskil. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, red is such a stunning color. Hmm, how about painting a spawn for chaos? The skin could be a good challenge. Well, for spawn of chaos, I have something for your viewing pleasure. I have built my first uh, spawn. Here you can see I've uh, put this here, what is supposed to be a head, on the side and made it uh, look like a fly. Also I've uh, filled the uh, holes in the back with some putty because uh, I think that's enough uh, claws and tentacles uh, for him. And uh, this is supposed to be then, uh, well, a Nurgle <coughs> chaos spawn. And hopefully I can make a tutorial for that too, <coughs> if I can find the mood to make that. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite color shade to paint in? Blue. I would definitely say blue, because blue is the uh, best opaque color in all the ranges. It uh, is very smooth to, uh, to layer on almost every uh, primer. Um, it is really easy to highlight and shade, and uh, it's just fun to paint blue. Not necessarily ultramarine blue, but uh, also uh, dark tones like Deadly Nightshade, that was one of my favorite tones, or Regal Blue, or something like that. But on the other side, blue is not my favorite color. <laughs> that is on a other paper. Uh, did you not want to use magnets for the arms? No, um, actually, I don't like to use magnets. I'm um, more like an old school girly here. Uh, yes, I know there is uh, lots of versatility in using magnets, but uh, I am. I see myself as a collector and. Uh, not so much as a player, and so if I want to have a captain with a power fist and a bolt pistol, then I make a captain for my Space Marine chapter with a bolt pistol and a power fist. But on the other hand, if I want to play with a captain with a power sword and a plasma pistol, then I make simply one with a plasma pistol and power sword. So I prefer to have more mi miniatures than just one miniature that is versatile. <clears throat> Call me crazy, but that's that's how I like it. So, uh, let's go on with the paint job here. Uh, it is now touch dry. And so I will uh, start to shade it now. First of all, we take normal oil for the uh, metal parts, uh, for the silver metal parts. Yeah. Very gently. Hitting some spots. Alexandra from Burn the Heretic TV. Hey there. <laughs> oh. 
So a question for you guys. What do you think uh, of the new Hobbit Lord of the Rings edition, I should say. <clears throat> Do you uh, like that Games Workshop uh, <coughs> makes that game and makes that uh, really nice miniatures? Or do you think, uh, oh, pff, scrap that, <coughs> throw away the uh, whole Lord of the Rings franchise and concentrate on Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer 40k? Or do you think, uh, pff, well, what the heck, it doesn't interest me at all? Or what are you, your, your opinions? I would like to know. <clears throat> so now I will uh, give the gold and the red parts a wash, and for that uh, you can choose either Arcrox Earthshade or Rackland Flesh Shade, it doesn't matter. Uh, I want it uh, a little bit darker, so I use the Arcrox, or for older painters uh, this is the equivalent to Devil in Mud. So, and this gives all the gold parts instantly a very, very nice shading. And also it works very well with the red. Gives the recesses nice shadow areas. I don't overflow, overflow the miniature now. <clears throat> Contrary to my normal painting. <laughs> So as you can see, I've uh, left the shoes in brown, <clears throat> but that's not kind of a big deal. Go over it with a wash, and they are good to go. In two ways for shoes. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> this needs to dry now. But unfortunately, the wash is very watery, and uh, so <clears throat> a good tip uh, to keep the uh, wash now in the place uh, you want to have it, turn the miniature uh, while it is drying. So I'm lowering the lamp now here. So and I'm simply turning the miniature now a little bit in my hands to let the wash flow in stay in the direction it should be. <laughs> so, uh, Wicked Paintbrush 1. I feel the Lord of the Rings game is bigger in Europe and not in the States. With GW it's all about 40k and nothing more. Okay. I don't know how uh, good or bad it is uh, in the States, but uh, here in Europe, especially here in uh, Germany, um, this is a very um, young painter friendly game, as I can uh, tell from what I've seen in the stores lately. So sometimes we, uh, sometimes GW don't think on the hobby only the money from Tobias May 12. Well, to be honest, if I would be the owner of GW, I would also look at the money. You get to think, this is a company. Yes, of course they are looking at the money. So uh, they don't make the game just to be nice to you. No, they, this, is a, this is a real business for them. And uh, they want to make money with that. And yes, of course, that's how they are approaching things. 
So if you are criticizing someone, like a company or so, you should always uh, well look over uh, the the border of your uh, of your of your visions, and uh, well imagine how it would be if you have uh, been in this position. So if you would be the owner of a company, how would you approach to uh, sell your stuff? <laughs> Here from Doom Hill, I don't care, GW is a business and I'm stupid enough to pay for the product. <laughs> well, we are not uh, stupid, it is simply our hobby and uh, GW is uh, feeding our needs with their products. So, quite normal. <laughs> it's like drugs, only made of plastic from Fantonic. Yeah. If you once go GW, you never go back. <laughs> So, okay, enough turned. I think the pools will stay now. <coughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, here, yeah, every company has to think about money to work from front to neck. <clears throat> Imagine if uh, they would totally uh, start to uh, make it only consumer friendly and uh, forget about the business part and uh, well, you don't want uh, GW uh, to, uh, to fail and to close their gates, that would be terrible. There are enough uh, miniature producing companies out there that have failed, Rapatha or Rackham or uh, I could go on if I uh, wanted to, but uh, you get the point. So uh, on the one hand, yes, as a consumer, uh, I don't like some approaches uh, what GW makes, but uh, on the other hand, um, we, we all have to um, <clears throat> think about what would be if uh, GW would fail and uh, don't go with a business plan in hand. <laughs> Haha, in Britain it is not that popular. In my store they look at you very uh, menacing as soon as you mention it. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Some place Lord of the Rings in Norway, but the interest have become bigger with the release of the Hobbit set. Well, I can't uh, say that here in uh, Germany already. I think the uh, hype will start after the movie hits the theaters. I think uh, then the uh, the old school uh, Lord of the Rings and uh, J.R.R. Tolkien fans will crawl again out of their caves and hobbit holes and start to play again and paint. And Well, let's be honest, uh, the Lord of the Rings uh, miniatures are not only for a game, they are really nice miniatures for fans of the, of the movie. For example, I really like to paint them, just simply to paint them, because, yeah, that that is what I've seen in the movie, and uh, I want to have a part of this, you know? That, that's uh, also part of every hobby or franchise you're, uh, you're in. Imagine, uh, for example, all the Star Trek fans that uh, wear costumes to uh, Star Trek cons or Star Wars fans alike with uh, their Stormtrooper uniforms and uh, what else, and yeah. This is uh, for Lord of the Rings fans another way to um, to show their love for the franchise. <clears throat> A question from Alexandre Ashby: Have you ever looked at the miniatures from Warlord Games? Um, I cannot say that I've done it, no. <laughs> As a company, I would train the employees to treat the customers and the veterans uh, like a precious gem and not like a burden, as I have experienced, sadly, with GW. 
from Wicked Paintbrush 1. Well, then you have uh, some root guys in your GW store. To be honest, here in uh, Germany, uh, in the rule number one, uh, the customer is king. It's always the rule here in Germany, in every store. <clears throat> Not only GW stores. Yeah, here yeah, from Doom Hill. I don't even play the game. I just paint the minis. Yeah. Same for me. I have nobody to play with it, but I like the minis. I like to paint them. <clears throat> so let's see. Uh, mini is almost dry. So, dum -de -dum -de -dum. from Doom Hill again. UK, the customer is always right. <laughs> And if the customer is not right, back to rule number one. <clears throat> have you seen the new models, dwarf models, in the rubric from Burn the Heretic TV? Yes, I have seen them. Uh, and they look really nice. And uh, there are a few miniatures, uh, well, quite a lot of miniatures in the new... Hobbit rule book that uh, seem very interesting for me. For example, here you see this high elf here. Uh, in the same style, you can uh, see now uh, elf and glade riders uh, in the book, and uh, I assume they are coming out as a new release soon. <clears throat> and uh, I will definitely buy a box of those because they look really nice, and that they would uh, go very well with those miniatures I have here. Yay, I didn't know you were streaming today. Lucky me, from Stephanie Morin. Well, I didn't know it uh, at first, too, so... But don't tell anyone. <laughs> Do you need to make a certain amount of videos to live stream? No. If you have a YouTube account uh, and a Google Plus account, you can live stream. I think so. I don't know if it is uh, only available for partners. Uh, Somebody of you can maybe tell me. Again, <clears throat> uh, a question from my twins. Have you had the chance to read the Hobbit rules yet? What were your thoughts on it? Uh, Terry from the UK. Uh, not completely. I'm still in the reading process. Right now I'm at the section uh, moving, jumping and difficult terrain. And uh, up to there I have not seen any major changes at all. <laughs> uh, from Doom Hill again, I make some YouTube videos but only have access to my webcam. Uh, what camera do you use? Well, for my uh, normal tutorials, I use this here, the Panasonic uh, HDC SD40. It's a, a well, not so pricey camera, and uh, it makes uh, good quality videos in a close range. It uh, has a good focus range. <clears throat> I like this camera. And uh, this here is a, a Microsoft... Um, Live Cam Studio, I'm using right now here for the live stream. So let's see if I can go on with the painting now. I Miniature mean, seems almost dry, so let's go ahead. <clears throat> so I will use again corn red. But this time without the Vallejo smoke in it. That's a little bit too dry. A little bit of water to make the color smoother. Ah, there we go. Need striking red. Right? 
and as always, um, <coughs> hitting the upper parts of the cloak to highlight it and leave the recesses dark. <coughs> Yeah, I think a lamp put up again. Yeah, there we go. Now I have a little bit more room to paint here. <laughs> it's not nice if the end of the brush is hitting my lamp. That makes so funny noises. <laughs> Here with the side of the brush, I'm hitting the edges of the uh, uh, what is called tower. You know this little stuff around his belly, belly band. Or, I don't know. Well, <clears throat> let's go ahead with highlighting. Now I use my fist on red. Well, the new triad of uh, red tones here with corn red, my fist on red, and then Weevil Sun Scarlet is a really nice triad of reds that work really well. Yes, of course, you could uh, make the transition much, much smoother with uh, much more different layers in between with super wet paint. And But let's face it, this is a regiment model and uh, you don't want to spend uh, three or four hours on one <coughs> of those miniatures if you want ever to feel an army of them. Well, of course, if you are just a collector and uh, you're painting the miniatures just for your display case, then of course you can spend several, several hours on them. But for me, this is a tabletop standard for me. <clears throat> Three highlight layers are enough. That's the normal business of tabletop for me. Yeah. Well, it goes much faster, as you can see, because you are painting less and less stuff. <coughs> so now for the last layer with Evil Sun's Scarlet. See, it's even brighter than the other red tone. <clears throat> and always, uh, if you if you're painting such a cloak, always uh, paint in the line of the. Uh, of the clock itself, don't try to paint it that way, you know?
think the miniature is almost done. <clears throat> For gaming purposes, well, let's highlight a little bit the uh, uh, sword. For that, I use the Mithril Silver Equivalent Rootfang Steel. <clears throat> Just highlighting here a little bit the Blade. There we go. Here, a little bit there, a little bit. <clears throat> a little bit of the chainmail armor. <clears throat> miniatures play ready well of course uh, we need to make the base so let's make that real quick so here we have our nice little sand tour oops and there we have our wet pool So we have here a hole in the base. That's not a problem at all. As we all know already, I can show you again. Just paint a little bit. And you take a little bit of uh, paper tissue. Just a tiny amount. Uh, place it on top. There. Uh, model it with a little bit of water on your brush. There you go. See, and the hole is covered. And now we we'll go over it again with white glue. Then uh, you finish gluing the base. Careful not to hit the miniature too much. So, there we go. And simply go through your uh, sandbox. Go with a finger around the base corner. And voila, the sand is applied. So, we have there a little bit of sand on the miniature. For that, just simply wash your brush and clean it off. Simple as that. <clears throat> so, that needs to dry a little bit before I can go on with the paint job. Okay, let's see if we have still some comments. <clears throat> uh, I swear I must have had bad luck with brushes. Takes so much work to get them to go smooth at all, and I think uh, I take rather good care of them uh, and their $5 to $10 brushes. Yes, uh, of course, taking uh, good care of your brushes is an absolute must. An absolute must. There's uh, no way around it. So uh, if you don't treat your brushes well, then uh, <clears throat> they will last only one painting session, and uh, you're wasting a lot of money, and <clears throat> also the nerves. <laughs> you're wasting a lot of nerves. So. Uh, 
Can you recommend a good rust pigment from Burn the Reddit TV? Yes, I can. Uh, my rust pigment uh, selection is uh, those four pigments here. Uh, first, burnt umber for darker pigment variations. Then here we have uh, oxide noir, we have a black, almost black uh, pigment is that, for deep recesses. Then we have dark red ochre and burnt sienna for the uh, well, orangey, bright, rusty uh, spots on the miniature. With those pigments, you can uh, paint almost any rust version you want to have. I can show you an example. Oh, let's see. Here we have one. You might remember him from um, the ogre painting tutorial. And here you can see on the rusted blade, here the uh, orangey. Uh, pigments and the uh, burnt sienna. This gives a really nice rust. And for this copper effect here, I've used a brass tone and uh, gone over it with a very, very watered down uh, Vallejo model color blue green. But uh, I think a turquoise color of any sort, for example, here, copper light green would uh, also work from GW to make a Copper rust. So uh, let's go on. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> what do you do after you've painted them? Well, uh, I stick them on my shelf. <laughs> uh, From uh, Tom Wilson 88, the red works really well. Uh, I've only seen ever uh, seen this done in blue, green, or gray. Yeah, well, that were the colors from the movies. But um, I've chosen the uh, gold and red from the um, well, more modern elves from uh, Haldir elves well, because I like this color scheme, and I think. It works well. Uh, which of those pigments would you use to do a rusty necron? Well, all four of them. You could uh, go to uh, an orc uh, stomper tutorial from me or hear the uh, uh, ogre tutorial. And there I can show you how to paint rust. And you simply apply exactly those techniques on a metal necron, and you have then a rusted necron. Simple as that. Uh, XX Dave LP. Oh, nein, ich bin zu spät. In English, oh no, I'm too late. Uh, well, don't worry. This video is going up after the live stream is over, so you can rewatch it. <laughs> Have you ever considered to paint the GW Ultimate paint set? No. Too expensive, and uh, I don't need it. I have colors uh, over the top. I can't ever uh, empty all my pots in my entire life, and I don't even need more paints, so no. Uh, my boyfriend says I take too long too. I will literally take three hours uh, or more on a single regular Crimson Slaughter Cultist from Stephanie Morin. Well, um, there's nothing bad about painting slowly. Just just tell him that uh, you, you could paint faster, but then there would be a, a less quality. And over time, you will get faster at painting. So, for example, this miniature here, that took me not so long in painting. You have seen me painting him the, the whole time in the video now. And uh, 
when I started painting, uh, this miniature would have taken me three to five hours to paint. You will get faster over time. So I think uh, now the perfect time to give the base a wash. And I use uh, also Agrax Earthshade for that. Just simply give the whole base a wash. Doesn't matter if here and there a little sandstone is moving, it will be kitted when the wash is dry. So, for example, here the shoes, I have only given them a wash. You, you don't actually need to highlight those. So, if you want to uh, paint um, whole armies, you have to choose which part of the miniature uh, you actually want to uh, uh, detail the most. Some parts of the miniature are so minor, uh, you, you don't see them really well on the miniature. So, just shade them and good. For example, also here the face. Uh, this is so tiny, um, I would uh, go crazy if I uh, would want to paint on uh, 20 of those high elves. Here the uh, faces that are in the shadow anyway, uh, to a high detail level. At such a small room, I would go crazy. <clears throat> but uh, I've taken uh, some time to paint a really nice red cloak and a golden armor. and. Uh, you have to imagine you're watching these miniatures uh, from two feet away on the battlefield and there you can't see his shoes or his face but his cloak and his armor and those are the things that uh, stand out and if you want to paint faster your miniatures you simply have to choose which part of the miniatures you take care of and which parts you can uh, simply paint in a faster way you know? Mm. So, <laughs> have you ever considered doing tutorial on how to play The Hobbit from Burn the Heretic TV? Uh, well, if you go back on my videos, I have already a tutorial or several tutorials on how, how to play Lord of the Rings. And yes, I will make a how to play The Hobbit again. Uh, and for that reason, I'm painting this miniature here. <laughs> because I need more show miniatures for the tutorials. About painting slowly, but he wants me to paint his elder army too. So yeah, I need to learn to paint faster and be happy with the results. Uh, why have you to paint his army? Why don't you paint your army really nice and let him paint his elder? How would that sound? <laughs> Actually, I don't like uh, slavery work when their boyfriends let their uh, girlfriends paint their army. No, that's that's not good. That's not good at all. Oh, what do you think? Do you let your girlfriends paint your miniatures? Do you think the edge painting set from Evie Metal is worth it from from Fentonic? Um, I think those could be really nice paints, but not for that price. The paintbrush I couldn't test. I don't know if this is a high quality brush or just a GW brush with a. a new emblem on it, I can't say. But uh, the price for this set is uh, out of this world. So if you want to have your own edge highlighting uh, set, then simply take those pots here, simply uh, clip pots. I have made an unboxing video on those and showed you where to buy it, buy them. And then simply mix your own colors. Just take, for example, if you want to have an edge highlighting uh, color for red, if you want to have it in a, uh, in a pink fashion, 
then simply take uh, some of this red here, for example, you fill the pot uh, till here with red, and the rest you fill up with white. And then you mix it, and then you have a really, really bright pink, and that you can take for your edge pink. Or the same with the blue. Just uh, fill up the pot to here with the blue of your choice and mix it up with white and et voila, you have your bright blue edge highlighting. And uh, to be honest, if you if you buy this box with the edge highlighting stuff, you only need maybe one or two colors of those for your armies. So <clears throat> I don't think it's worth it for the money. I would have liked it if they uh, just incorporated the paints itself into the uh, color range. That would be a, a smart move of them, but not in this way. But on the other side, it's uh, another uh, decision from the uh, from the business standpoint. Yes, there is a painting guide in there, but <clears throat> let's face it, do I need a painting guide? Not really. So, uh, from Stefan Babcock, nope, I paint mine for me and I paint hers, but she only, but she's only a collector. Uh, when are we going to see your Dr. Festus painting? I'm working on him now, great mini. Uh, to be honest, after the unboxing, I haven't touched him at all. <laughs> He's still here. I. Uh, I'm waiting on inspiration, you know? I have lots of minis around here that I'm waiting on inspiration. <clears throat> From Stephanie Morin, I agree, those edge paints are a waste and they're limited edition. So when you run out, it's gone. So that's not good at all. Yeah, that's a, another big point. Limited edition on paints. That's an absolute no-go. Absolute no-go. Imagine that situation. You paint your army halfway, and then while painting, you get a phone call and you forget to uh, close the pot. And after the phone call, you uh, rush out of the house and uh, be gone for two days, and you come back, and the super important color for edge highlighting your miniatures is dry. Do you want to uh, buy a whole new box just for this one color? I don't think so. <clears throat> From Stephanie Morin, I'm the artist, he takes care of the basing and the mats, and well, he buys all the stuff for me, and I promised I would. <laughs> okay, okay, well, sometimes it's like that, that the girls like to paint and the boys like to play. Give the boys their toys. <laughs> Uh, from uh, Greer to Rand. How does this work? Are you reading them right in this second? Yes, I'm sitting right next to my computer uh, and I'm reading the comments here, live in this show. Well, the comments are uh, one or two minutes later uh, than I read them, but it's actually live here. <laughs> Let's see with the base here. Yeah, <clears throat> let's finish the base corner. I want that in a darker brown tone, so I use now Monfrey Brown. And a good thing about a brown base coat <clears throat> is a brown color works very well on a brown. Undercoat. So, <clears throat> the edge is now also painted. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Hello, I love your videos from RogueFox98. Hello, and I love you as my subscriber. <laughs> Uh, so here in Sweden we've got about four feet of snow. How is it in Germany from steel chains? Well, a few days ago, uh, well actually at the 1st of December, it snowed here quite well. So, uh, but it melted all down. <laughs> so now it's just only wet and dark outside. From Bob Manias, on an average day, how much time would you say that you paint? Uh, zero till nothing, to be honest. Right now, I'm almost not painting at all. Uh, in, in a normal schedule, the three years uh, ago, I would say, well, one or two miniatures every two days, maybe. That was my painting schedule. Well, this is still a hobby for me and not a work, so I, I don't rush my work. If I have uh, the need to paint, then I paint. <laughs> Have you ever painted anything Tau? It's been a unique experience painting them for me from Gundarmerx792. Um, this is my first Tau. <laughs> and he's primed. So, does that answer your question? <clears throat> What do you do when you don't want to paint anymore? Well, I stop paint. <laughs> I listen to music, I play computer games, I read books, I watch movies, I watch television shows like The Big Bang Theory or Star Wars, The Clone Wars or How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, hi Alexandra, I have some Dark Angel Space Marines from the Dark Vengeance set that I want to paint as other chapters. How do you remove the shoulder pad emblem? You have uh, taught me so much. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, let's see. I have here on my painting desk a few terminators. I have already removed here the uh, the Dark Angel emblem. It's actually quite easy. You simply uh, take your trusty little hobby knife. So, and then you uh, simply cut the stuff carefully away. And when you cut, uh, always hold it in, the, in this position. So, if you are uh, sliding away with your uh, knife, then you hit your thumb with a hard part, with a plastic part of the knife, and so you don't cut yourself directly into your thumb. So that would be a bad thing. Other things, uh, to smooth them down, just simply uh, scratch over the surface until it is uh, as smooth as possible. Also, you could uh, use a, a very tiny Dremel tool to remove those, but be careful when you use a Dremel, don't uh, make it too high in the uh, spinning volume because uh, the plastic goes hot and then you melt through your uh, plastic and that looks ugly. So make it a slow uh, paste and then you can go for it from there. So <clears throat> I think the base is now ready for the last final touches. So let's go for it with some Bestigor flesh. <clears throat> yes, I use a skin tone for that. So, 
then we go over the sources. As I know, the result is not absolutely perfect because I didn't give it enough time to completely dry, but well, it doesn't matter right now. So, <clears throat> after that, I will mix in some uh, bleach bone or pale sand from the layer model color here. About 50 50, I would say. Um, and go also very gently over it. Don't paint every single part so you have the old color still on the base. <coughs> that gives it a little bit more variety and depth if you have more different colors on the base. So, and I would say, and voila, the high half is done. <coughs> so, I thank you all for watching this uh, live stream here. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I hit my camera. Um, it was fun again. From a colonial Kili, Kauf dir ein Skapel, uh, on English uh, by a scalpel. Uh, actually, I have a scalpel, but uh, I don't use it because it is not safe enough. I just showed the method how to use a hobby knife, but a scupper don't have this uh, <clears throat> uh, this protection layer, so it is not very safe to work with that. So uh, I have here on my fingers some uh, scars here, for example, from using scupper scuppers in my hobby, and no, I don't use that anymore. Uh, from Stephanie Morin, thank you. Alexandria minus the I. I'm called Alexandra, not Alexandria. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, let's see, last question. Uh, I would not have picked a flashy color, but this is why you are the master. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for tuning in. And we see us in the next video. You're Alexandra. See you.